This is a production of the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Unfiltered here, HardwayHQ.com, via the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. You can find this podcast through iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Podcast, Amazon Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, the vast gamut of podcasting applications, as well as the aforementioned Hardway HQ Dot com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at Hardway HQ. Instagram at the Hardway HQs if there's any other one. Advertising concerns, hate mail, John at HardwayHQ.com. That's J O N at. Don't actually write at. Use the A with the circles around it. Cool gimmick, cool shtick, cool deal, baby. John at HardwayHQ.com. I'm John Harder here in the beautiful, luxurious Hardway HQ studios. Looking to bring you another edition of Unfiltered, and you know, I, you know, this is episode forty-nine, and next week it's episode fifty. I mean, I can't believe we've officially done almost fifty episodes of this podcast. Uh, you know, we, Hard Wage Q. This is the tenth year of existence of anything podcast related regarding myself, and you know, I don't think I've really ever talked about too much my radio influences, my my audio influences, people who inspired me to want to do. You know, audio. I mean, we're doing video, obviously, for the YouTube and Facebook. Please like the video and share if you can and help the algorithm out. But not a lot of people um, know a lot of my radio influences. And one of the main ones was WCBS FM growing up. And uh, if you paid attention to anything, Hardway HQ, um, if it wasn't for a little rib that me and Chris Shady Torres did back in the day, there's a blog up from years ago on Hardway HQ called The Tale of Shady Joe Causey. And the smooth tag and based off uh, Santana smooth back in the day. And CBS FM, big thing for Shady, but big thing for me as well. And I have a little bit of a more deeper knowledge of CBS FM. And there's always been one guy that's been a major influence on me growing up. You know, for obviously morning radio shows, uh, it's very difficult to come by, especially nowadays. I mean, obviously I got Jim and Sam on Sirius. And um, before that, it was Boomer and Carton on The Fan. You know, before Carton um, had his issues and went away for a little bit and came back. And now it's on afternoons. But for me, as a kid, there's only there was always one morning radio show on right before I go to school as a kid. There was Willett School, Campbell School, the middle school one, middle school two, or the high school. There's always one station on with CBS FM. And there's only one guy on my radio. Literally, my radio throughout my childhood. And it was Harry Harrison, the morning mayor on CBS FM, and Harry Harrison uh, was my guy growing up. I mean, he was a clean DJ. Um, he, he had personality, he had charisma, and he had his own thing. But the history of Harry Harrison is even more interesting before getting to CBS FM, uh, starting his career in Chicago and Peoria, Illinois. Uh, he made his way to, uh, I actually wrote this down a little bit because I was, I was familiar with uh, ABC, but he actually was at 570 a.m., when AM radio was the deal, before FM really took its foothold in terrestrial radio, uh, he was at 570 AM, WAMC, in New York, and he was the afternoon guy. He was the good guy on uh, on that station for a long time. And in 1968, he went over to 77 WABC to do music. I mean, he was he was the, the morning mayor over there, and he was the morning mayor, and he's, he's been the morning guy in New York, you know, from about almost 35, 40 years. And Harry Harrison, I mean, he worked al alongside with legendary DJs back in the day. Scott Muni, who is best known for his work with 1027, uh, WNEW New York, rock the rock format. That guy basically made that station, you know, before uh, a lot of people remember it in the dying days as uh, Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s. But also you got, you know, Cousin Brucey, you know, living legend of music still doing it on saturday nights on a 77 abc they're doing a decade plus at sirius uh ron lundy hello love and chuck leonard and so many other guys i mean legendary radio djs back when it was you know you play the hits and you get a couple you get a couple beats to go get your get your shtick in harry harrison was a class act on the radio you could always tell by his voice he was just a a genuine good dude loved loved radio and you know, for, for me, and a major influence on uh, on legendary Harry Harrison was his song, May You Always. It was a spoken narrative. It was like a narration just trying to motivate people to have a better, 
a better year and a better tomorrow during the holiday season. That was released in 1965. I will get in that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> one of his catchphrases was originated during his time at 77 WABC. Every new day should be unwrapped like a precious gift. And that is such a legendary phrase. Again, positivity. You know, there's so much negativity in the world now. I wish that phrase would be uttered more on the radio and it wouldn't just be like looking for, for ratings and whatnot, looking for just for the story. Building positivity for your work day in the morning to get through a tough day. I mean, the late 60s, early 70s was like the Vietnam War. And, you know, you're dealing with a lot of things where New York was starting to degenerate a little bit into crime. And Harry Harrison and his, his positivity would just build through the radio. You would hear that. And, and I listen to old broadcasts on YouTube. There's a lot of that stuff, a lot of old clips. And uh, by 79, he was on his way out. And FM radio is on the rise. 77 ABC went a different way. So in 1980, early 1980, he became the morning mayor on WCBS FM. And he stayed there for 23 years. And Harry Harrison, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, was my childhood on the radio. Literally, I mean, his stuff where he would have, I remember every morning, it would be Al Meredith doing the news. I'm Al Meredith, CBS FM. And he, he would have Phil Pepe every 15 to 45 in the hour in the morning doing the sports. I would always get my sports information, hearing about the Yankees and the Mets and uh, anything else going on in sports. Uh, Mr. G with his weather. Now, Mr. G and Harry Harrison had a great rapport, great, great, great back and forth. Uh, continuity with each other, especially on windy days where, where uh, Harry Harrison would be doing his um, and then Mr. G would be reading it really fast, like da, 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 da. and then at the end of it, it would be toupee warning, and I pop every time because <laughs> it's just it's hysterical. It's just like it's silly but fun radio to get you in the morning. Nothing too serious keeps you going through the day, even with some serious stories and whatnot. But Harry Harrison kept it light kept the morning show light and then oh man like every like it was like 7 20 every morning he had the birthday book you read the birthdays and and he would go through and it would this would be like this for 23 years on the radio when i was born in 85 we moved to jersey in 91 and that would, that would be on our, our kitchen you know small tv slash radio every morning you would listen to harry harrison and he retired in 2003, um, although he did say, I'm not retiring. He was officially leaving the morning show in 2003. And uh, my mornings was a little little bit different after this. It started the, you know, it's like the wonder years, the age of wonder. You know, <laughs> um, it, it just was, it was difficult because it's like in the era of Howard Stern and uh, the other morning shows like Elvis Duran and the Z Morning Zoo, even Scott and Todd on PLJ. Um, I don't know if Jim Kerr was doing 104.3 in the mornings, but when you have like a, a, a major run of, of radio, it's amazing. I was listening to Harry Harrison every morning growing up. That's the dedication of my mom. You know, my mom in the morning always leaving that on and having the oldies play Del Shannon, My Little Runaway, or Who Wrote the Book of Love. You would hear that every morning. And it was going to be tough without Harry Harrison. But then he came back. In the in the, the summer of 2004, he started doing the Breakfast with Beatles. He would play Beatles songs and do all this different stuff. Um, you know, they're talking about the Beatles doing different things in the morning on, on Saturday mornings. I for most mornings, I'd be out and driving around, hanging out with my ex girlfriend, or you know, just going out and doing things, going out for a drive. And I would listen. 19 years old, I listened to the Breakfast with Beatles. And then June 3rd, 2005, uh, Harry Harrison would never be heard on the radio again as WCBS FM turned into Jack FM. Pissed off everybody, include then mayor Michael Bloomberg, who loved his sugar soda. He wanted to ban it. He wanted to ban the big cups from New York. But uh, and Harry Harrison would never be heard again as a radio disc jockey. And it always made me sad. You know, that's the way he went out with the format change that wasn't needed in New York. Uh, but Harry Harrison is a major influence on me. Just the way he kept the lights. Stay happy. Stay well. Stay right there. CBS FM. And. Uh, you know, the, the, the ode to Harry Harrison that we do here at Hard Wage Cues, every holiday season, uh, we always play, we always play uh, May You Always. And it's every Hard Wage Cue, Hard Wage Cue holiday party. We play it. Uh, it's my dedication to Harry Harrison. And there's one other thing that I want to discuss. It's probably one of my earliest memories as a kid in New York. It's probably five. I was in kindergarten, PS91 in Glendale, Queens. My mom probably doesn't even remember this, but I do. We were driving to a kid's birthday party that was in my class. I don't know if it was like a 
roller skating thing or, or something. It was it was definitely a birthday party of someone. I don't know where it was. Maybe it was near uh, Green Acres or I used to wear Oshkosh Bagosh or whatever. <laughs> but we would travel somewhere. I think it might have been a roller skating party. And I, and I, I remember this vividly. We were in the, we were in the car. It might have been just me and my dad at this point. And Starship. We built this. It took me 15 years to find this song out. We built this city from Starship. And on the clip of the song was uh, Harry Harrison saying, uh, you know, giving his little, like, where they have the radio DJ come in, uh, talking about the city that never sleeps. He'd have his little bit about CBS FM. Got your morning coffee ready yet? Let's go, CBS FM! And you would go in from there. And I always remembered that because WCBS FM had their own radio edit with Harry Harrison and Ron Lundy in there. And uh, I found it on YouTube not too long ago, and I downloaded it. And it's on my iPod. And it's just another member of Harry Harrison. And I always wanted to tip my cap with my hat hair to Harry Harrison, a morning mayor. Um, major major focus of my childhood. And it's something you don't forget. And he passed away last year at the age of 89, close to his 90th birthday. Uh, pretty Patty predeceased him. And he, had, he left behind two kids. You know, his other two kids passed away before him, which is heartbreaking. But the fact is... Um, I think kids need to realize their the, the past and history. And not all history is bad. And I wish people would really look back at the true history of radio DJs and go back and look at some of the legends in radio and realize what Scott Shannon did before um, before you know being on CBS FM now, doing what he did with Z100 back in Pirate, Pirate Radio in L.A. Uh, I wish people would go back and see what Cousin Brucey did you know, in, in the 60s and 70s, especially with uh, Frankie Valli singing a song. And I, I wish people would really especially go back and just listen to Harry Harrison, just listen to his positivity, his upbeat personality, and um, realize we had it good. A lot of the world seems way too serious now. Way too serious. Everything's about the news and, and you know, just... <sighs> Terrestrial radio's not the same anyway. It's not how it was, especially, in, you know, the early the mid 2000s with Howard Stern going to Sirius and you know Opie and Anthony losing FM radio in New York which is the death of morning radio for me in New York uh but Harry Harrison was at that point in my childhood I'm blessed to have had him and I hope everybody who ever was a fan of radio tries to find clips of Harry Harrison shows that's how it's done that's how you do a morning show light professional classy fun upbeat that's what Harry Harrison was my morning mayor Always and forever, Harry Harrison. Just wanted to do this one for episode 49 of Unfiltered. Uh, this is Unfiltered. I'm John Harder. Hardwayhq.com.